Uh, I guess uh, good morning, uh, your time, and I'm happy to be here. Um, so my name is Wei Hu. Uh, I'm a senior vice president at Oracle, working on high availability technologies. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, crypto secure data management and what we're doing in terms of blockchain inside the database. So I want to start with uh, motivation in terms of, you know, why uh, you need uh, crypto secure data management. Well, there's a lot of security mechanisms built into the database, right? And lots of but these security mechanisms, technologies, focus on keeping criminals out, right? So that's why you have passwords, you have privileges, you have encryption, and you have firewalls. Right, so these things basically protect your data and your machines from the outside, right? Protect you, you keep your criminals out. What blockchain does, it adds an extra level of data security, right? It protects your data from being illicitly modified or deleted. And that's even if the criminals manage to break in through your security, through your other security mechanisms. And the way it does this is by using cryptographic digests and signatures to implement crypto secure data management. Okay. And I'll, I'll talk more about what this is. To start with, you know, any new technology is sort of a dilemma, right? So like a blockchain is no exception. Blockchain is very compelling, but difficult to implement. Right? So according to this global blockchain survey, you know, blockchain is one of the top five strategic priorities through 2020, right? And 86% of the respondents to the survey said that blockchain offers a compelling business case. Right? So this is very compelling. Right? However, blockchain projects have a notoriously high failure rate. Right? So according to the IDC report, they said that the technical complexities and the cost associated with the creation and configuration of blockchain, you know, and then maintaining the infrastructure are all seen as a barrier. Right? So it's complicated, it's expensive, and it's just hard, right? So we believe that to realize the potential of blockchain, it has to be much easier to implement. And that's, that's what we're about. We're trying to do blockchain for the masses. Right? And up to this point, when we talk about blockchain, it's really meant for you know, these decentralized multi-party applications, right? like different banks talking to each other and so forth. But you know, conventional blockchain technologies require new applications to be written using new development methodologies, you know, like you know, new data management products, and I think hardest of all, new business processes. Right? Because you can, you can absorb new technologies, but changing the way you do business is actually very hard. Yeah. So Oracle has now released breakthrough technology that deeply integrates blockchain to Oracle database. And what this does, it makes it possible to implement blockchain in mainstream enterprise and government applications, right? With minimal application changes. Okay. I think that's important. You know, when we talk about mainstream enterprises, these are applications that you run and use today, right? And I think the key is to make to be able to use these use these applications with minimal changes. And what we and this and by putting it's part of our database, we also give you the full functionality of the world's leading database with crypto, cryptographically protected data. And with this, we believe that the benefits of blockchain are now available beyond decentralized multi-party applications. And I think that that's that's a key point, which is that most of the applications that exist today are not multi-party applications, right? And so what we do is we make it possible for these applications to get the benefits of blockchain technologies. Now, I want to talk about uh, preventing illicit changes to data. Right? The Oracle blockchain really focuses on preventing illicit changes to data that records important actions, assets, entities, and documents. So we can all think of what these important data are. Examples are contracts, you know, property titles, payments, transfers, ledgers, account statements, and so forth. Right? So these are examples of data that has to be preserved and never modified. Right? So if you have a, a contract, you don't want them to come through and modify the contract. Right? Um, and then, this is the kind of data that shouldn't, can only be deleted when it's obsolete, but otherwise you want to keep it around so you can refer to it. And of course, you know, we want to prevent illicit changes, right? Because illicit changes 
to important documents, records can have bad consequences, right? You can lose your assets. Someone can, someone can modify your title. They can steal your, your, your house, right? Your land. Legal exposure, right? Uh, loss of reputation and so forth. Because you're a bank and you lose data, that's bad, right? So what's interesting is that the Oracle crypto security is not limited to providing change ledgers. Right? And, and that's important because when we talk about conventional blockchains, conventional blockchains are really a distributed ledger system, right? But Oracle crypto security is not limited to providing change ledgers. You can directly provide reference data as well. So the examples of the, data, of the kind of data that I talked about, contracts, property title, payments, and so forth, those are not ledgers, right? But we can still protect them using this crypto, uh, crypto security. Before we go to the, to the vulnerability, it's important to point out that there are certain vulnerabilities that are just unavoidable, right? And two of them. The first unavoidable problem is just hackers. You know, there are hackers out there, right? And then you have to think about what happens if the hacker finds a way to bypass the security mechanisms, right? And, and we know this happens because obscure new security breaches are discovered all the time. The second end of why problems are users who are curved to compromise, right? Because basically humans are a weak link. <laughs> we make mistakes and so forth, right? So what if an authorized user uses their valid credentials to make illicit data changes? You know, suppose you have an insider in your company who are corrupt or malicious, you know, they could be administrators, developers, support staff, supervisors, sales staff, right? And then they make changes that they shouldn't make, right? Or you may have compromised users. You may have a criminal impersonating an insider or end user, right? Then this could be a criminal who uses credentials from an insider using malware or phishing attacks and so forth. So some hacker out there, you know, got my logins and logging as me, right? So that's compromised user. But of course, the, the, actually the, the worst kind of protection to, threat to, to protect against are what we call corrupt enterprises or government agencies, right? So these are organizations that intentionally change records to steal assets or commit fraud. Because when you're trading with another company, what if the other company is fraudulent and then does bad things, right? So these are some unavoidable vulnerabilities that we're trying to address. Now, when I describe this, some of these things sound very far-fetched, right? But in fact, some of these, these are actually are happening, right? So for example, new security hacks are unavoidable, right? In 2020, there were 2,709 critical security vulnerabilities. These are CVSS 910. So these are the very, very severe problems. More than 2,000 of them in one year. Uh, corrupt insiders are unavoidable. Right? I, I joked before about how we are the weak link, right? Here's an example of a bank teller stole more than a million dollars over 10 years by falsifying bank records. Stolen insider credentials are unavoidable. Hackers gain access to Sony's network after a series of phishing emails, right? And then, you know, they, they basically manage to get in, right? And bribing of insiders is unavoidable, okay? This is a Tesla. Tesla employs over half a million dollars to insert malware into the, into the Tesla system, right? And fortunately, this person was very honest and he reported bribery to him. But as you can see the things that are happening in real life around us. And so, Given that we cannot make humans perfect and, and so forth, right? We are focused really on limiting the damage from these unavoidable vulnerabilities, okay? Although we can never eliminate these vulnerabilities, what we can do is we can limit the damage that these things cause. So blockchain will not prevent your data from being stolen, okay? But it provides an additional layer of defense that can provide, prevent the dire consequences of your data being changed. And I think that that's really important because consider what's worse, someone seeing your bank account, right? Or someone stealing the money in your bank account, right? Now it's bad for someone to see my bank account, but it's far, far worse when you steal money from a bank account. And this is where, you know, limiting the damage comes in. And what Orga does is that we provide protections for many types of illicit changes, right? And going from left to right, you know, we talk about first, we have the first technology we talk about is immutable tables that prevents illicit insider changes, right? Then a step up from that are blockchain tables that detects illicit hacker changes. Then on top we can layer distributed digests 
like the tax authority order in those exchanges, and data signing that prevents an impersonated data fraud. And these technologies can be adopted incrementally to protect against the types of list of changes that are most important for each use case and application. And what's really nice is that all of these only the only the, the, the protections for against data, only the protections involving with data signing requires significant application changes. The rest are very easy to adopt by application. And I just want to say that even so, I characterize the threats by four categories and so forth. You know, each of these technologies are actually useful against multiple threats. But for simplicity, I just describe in terms of single threats. Okay, so the first thread is preventing illicit changes by insiders. Right? And this is where immutable tables. And when I talk about insiders, could be real insiders who are corrupt or criminals using insider credentials. So Oracle immutable tables prevent illicit modifications by insiders using the database. And that, that is using SQL interface. For example, changes by rogue employees or employees whose credentials were stolen. Right? And the immutable tables allow you, as the name says, cannot be changed. It allows new data to be added, but existing data cannot be changed or deleted by anyone using the database. And when we say anyone, this includes database administrators. So once data is in there, you cannot change it or delete it. And these are easy to use because basically to create an immutable table, you just simply add the immutable keyword to a table creation statement. So you should say create immutable table, table name as usual, and you get an immutable table. And uh, the table is just a relational table, can support relational data and JSON or log documents. It's not restricted to ledgers, can store reference data. Basically, anything you can describe as a table can be stored. And it behaves like a regular table, except the immutable table users cannot update it to leave rows. You cannot change the table definition, and you cannot convert this immutable table into an updatable table or vice versa. Okay, so it's protected. And lastly, you cannot modify the table metadata in the data dictionary. And uh, I want to emphasize that immutable tables require no application changes. Because these are just tables, right? So you can just you know, use them as regular tables and so forth. And the immutable table feature is available in database 19C, 19.11RU, and 21C. Okay? And these came out in April of this year. So immutable table is the first step, right? Second step is, how do you detect illicit changes by hackers? And that's where cryptographic data chaining comes in. You know, immutable tables prevent you from, immutable tables, the security is enforced by database software, right? But what if the database software that enforce immutability is bypassed? Suppose some hacker managed to bypass the database software, right? So for example, you know, the hacker discovered a new security vulnerability, or a rogue or compromised system administrator can use operating system credentials to bypass the database software, right? By going directly to the operating system, to a disk or whatever. So what blockchain is, blockchain detects changes to data by computing and safely storing a small cryptographic digest of the data, okay? So there's a data and we store a cryptographic digest. The idea is that if the data were changed, it would not match cryptographic digest anymore, okay? And so, so by comparing the cryptographic digest of the data, you can see was a change when it was since it was written. And this mechanism works. You know, this is a mechanism of using the cryptographic digest, even if the attacker takes over full control of the database, right? Because no matter what privileges you have, you still cannot bypass the mathematics like underneath the crypto cryptography, because no matter how you change it, the cryptographic digest would no longer match, and that's how you detect it. So the blockchain table is, is, a, is a extended version of the immutable table. What it does is automatically change new rows to existing rows cryptographically. The way it works is following. Okay. Actually, to create it is just very simple. So you should create blockchain table, table name and so forth. Okay. We add a new row, insert a new row. Okay. A new row we will do is we compute a cryptographic digest, right? That is based on the row itself as well as the previous row's cryptographic digest. So this is how we basically chain the, the, chain the content of this row with the content of the previous row and link them together. And that's why it's called a blockchain. Right? 
And so if you modify the data in the chain, so if you modify this row, the cryptographic digest would no longer match, right? And so that's how you can detect you know, changes, right? So you can detect changes to previous rows as well as the current row and so forth. Now, you can, you can validate these cryptographic digests, but you can basically compute a row, you know, and compare it, compute the cryptographic digests every single row and verify that they're all consistent, right? And we provided a PLC code procedure, even as blockchain verify row to do this, right? In addition, for those who want to independently verify outside a database, you can actually validate the blockchain table outside a database. And what we do is we provide an open source library that can be basically read out every single row, compute the checksums and validate that the data has not been changed. And what this allows you to do is for instance, you might have an independent data auditor who can validate the data, similar to the way that financial auditors validate account records. Right. And this relieves the end users from this task. And in a, in a system where you share many, many different cu customers, it helps preserve data privacy because this way only the auditor needs to see the data for all the users to validate the chain. Um, this blockchain table is very scalable and available. First, they're very fast. The response time of insert can be sub millisecond, and that includes the commit. And it's very scalable and available because we use rack scale clusters and we use data guard for geographical data or geographical, geographical disaster protection. Immutable tables and blockchain tables are Oracle converged database features. And so they're just part of the Oracle database, right? So you don't need to install a blockchain only database. So like the Amazon's quantum ledger database, right? Which is, which is their blockchain database, but you have to install it as a separate database apart from regular databases. And it requires no application changes. These are just tables. Right? You can access them with standard declarative SQL. It supports full analytics and transactions on table data. Right? You can do queries, reports. You can you know, have transactions against them. And I think, best of all, it's a free feature of all the Oracle database submissions. Right? And uh, because we really want to encourage customers to adopt this. Right? And this is available in database 19C, 21C. Okay, so I talked about uh, the first two types. I talked about immutable tables that can protect you against insider attacks. Then I talk about blockchain tables that can help you detect hacker attacks that get underneath the database. And now I'll talk about the detecting cover-ups of illicit changes by authorities. And this is where the concept of a distributed publication of data digests comes in. Now, here's what's interesting, which is that the cryptographic chaining of rows that I described earlier can be compromised by large scale cover up. Okay. So, because what happens is if someone changes a row and then rewrites the entire chain that comes after the row, right, then you can't tell that it's been changed because then all the checksum would match, right? So, if I change a row and then rewrite all the checksum after the row, right back, then it's almost as if you know, nothing happened, right? So, that, so examples of large scale cover ups. I can do this. First, suppose you have a corrupt executive or government authority that replace the database with this data. Right? Or a sophisticated cyber crime organization that deletes and rewrites the database. To detect this kind of large scale cover up, right, Oracle enables the cryptographic digest of the table to be freely distributed publicly. Okay? That's key. So we sort of distribute these cryptographic digests. And so the cryptographic digest that I talked about earlier is signed by this is signed by the schema owner, right? This is where you know they really came from this database. So it guarantees non repudiation. Then this digest can be distributed periodically of when the important data is inserted. So the idea is that suppose you know maybe every fifth record or every tenth record I distribute the digest, or if it's really important important update, I sorry insert important insert I to shoot the digest at that point, okay? And then, then what happens is data will come to come back to validate the script digest. You can validate it against the copies that were distributed outside. And these digests are okay to distribute anywhere because 
The digest alone does not tell you what the data is, right? The digest can be used to check the data, but the digest does not contain the data, right? So, you know, so we'll just put it, put it out in the, in the public domain, if you will. I just keep on publishing these public, these digests. And, you know, so we see that you can put it into a public data store, like a bulletin board, or a multi-party blockchain, or just send it out by email or REST. And that's okay, because so long as it's, it's sent out to independent places, you're fine. And then by distributing these blockchains, we can then detect cover-ups. Because what happens then is that you can then compare the previously published digest to the current table contents, right? So you can validate the table contents and see the digest you got still matches those were published externally. And by distributing digest public across multiple independent services, right? Multiple independent services, maybe multiple countries, that prevents an authority or cyber attacker from being able to delete all the independent copies, right? Because then they would have to modify, rewrite the database, recompute all the cryptographic digests, then go to all the external sources where they were published and change all of them. And that's, that is just not practical. Okay? So this is why distributing the blockchain digest gives you an extra level of security against you know, widespread cover-up temper. And and we think that the heterogeneous distribution that we talk about here provides much strong protection than a homogeneous distributed blockchain. And publishing the data digest does not require changes to existing applications. Your existing applications still work as tables as they do normally, but some external process just periodically publishes these data digests. Okay, so, so now I, I've talked about immutable tables. I talk about blockchain tables and, and I talk about public distributing the uh, cryptographic digests. The last part is protecting against preventing data falsification uh, by impersonators. Okay. And the technology we use here is called end user data sign. You know, so the technology I talked about before, blockchain tables, immutable tables, protect data that's being inserted in the table. Right? But what if the data that was inserted was falsely inserted? Suppose some end user you know, took somebody else's identity and inserted it. So for example, an insider uses internal information to impersonate another end user. Or suppose an end user's credentials are stolen by a hacker. Right? Um, or possibly a developer and operator hacker bypasses the application's credentials checking. Okay? So these are all the ways you can impersonate somebody else and then calls false data to be inserted into this table. To address this vulnerability, Oracle allows the end user to optionally cryptographically sign new data that they insert. Um, this does require sophisticated users to have digital identity and the public certificate. Okay, so not all end users have this. So we think that this is more common for businesses than for customers and for end user consumers. And also does require the applications to implement digital signing of data, right? So when I store a piece of information in the database, uh, the application needs to sign the data to make sure to, to certify that this came from the user who's running the application. The way this works is following. Okay. When the data is, well, before the data is inserted into the table, the end user signs the data using the private key, right? And the private key is never passed to the database. Then the end user, of course, would register a, pub, a digital certificate containing their public key. This allows the database to validate the signature on the data. So we can validate, we run the public key on the data to, to be sure that it actually came from the, the end user that which was, was claiming it to be. And we store the certificate ID for the public key in every row so that we know that who signed it and what the public certificate was. Furthermore, we can also the Oracle database can also countersign the new data. So after the, the data is being inserted, the Oracle actually signed their whole row, right? Um, to acknowledge the fact that the Oracle database received, it, received the data. So this provides what we call an end-to-end -end crypto receipt for new data. So you know that you inserted data, you got a signature back from the database saying, I got the data. So you, now you can trust it, right? And this prevents a middle tier from filtering certain data to prevent it from being recorded. Because what you don't want to do is have your end user inserting a row, but then have somebody in the middle take the row and never insert in the database. 
So by having this end-to-end -end crypto, crypto receipt, right, did the end user know that the data was really inserted in the database? And this, again, is available in 1910, 19C, and 21C. Okay, so at this point, I want to switch gears a little bit and compare what I've talked about with what I call conventional peer-to-peer -peer blockchain systems. As I described it, a blockchain table with publicly distributed signed digest, digest is simple to use and, most, and provides most of the benefits of full peer-to-peer -peer blockchain products. Okay. And that's one of the things we want to do, which is that you know, we want to make it be simple to use and give the benefits. Right? So blockchain tables prevent illicit changes made using the database, right? because we, we just don't allow the interface to, to, to update these tables. Right? Uh, and furthermore, we can detect illicit changes that bypass the database. So we don't use the database interface, but go underneath the database at the operating system level or, or hacking and so forth. Right? We would detect those changes using the cryptographic chaining. Now, it is true that if you can directly prevent all forms of these changes, that gives you better, better protection. Okay. However, the fact that we can detect these changes also indirectly prevents most fraud. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's very interesting, right? If we can guarantee to detect illicit changes, it actually prevents most fraud because criminals won't commit fraud if they know they will be caught. So for example, if a criminal will not take a bribe while well, he or she is being video recorded. Right? So if you know you'll be detected, you're much less likely to commit the fraud in the first place. Now, if you really want to prevent, completely prevent illicit changes, direct prevent illicit changes that bypass database, then you actually do need a peer-to-peer -peer blockchain architecture, right? Where before you can make a change, you need to have multiple parties agree to the change. Um, and, what, and the reason this works is because if someone just takes over a database, right, it, the, the, it requires consensus to make a change. So, so, so no single party can make a change without agreeing with other parties. So even if I take over a complete database, it doesn't help me because I cannot get the other parties to agree. Right? However, you know, peer to peer is still vulnerable to a common bug across all the peers. Right? So, but I think. The, the biggest challenge for peer-to-peer -peer blockchains is that peer-to-peer -peer consensus requires new application development methodologies. Right? This is why we have things like smart contracts and so forth. Right? And furthermore, requiring consensus to make changes is really a change to the way businesses are done today. Right? So for example, if I were a bank, what a peer-to-peer -peer model says, I'm not allowed to make any changes unless I get my peer banks to agree. So who might be my competitors? Right? And so this kind of change the business processes turns out to be very, very hard, right? Because it requires sacrifice and autonomy because I can no longer do something on my own, right? And, and, and it requires some sacrifice and privacy because now I need other people to agree to a change I make, which means I'm sharing information about things I'm doing. So overall, we believe that peer-to-peer -peer blockchain systems provide very effective illicit change prevention, right? But at the expense of significant complexity and trade-offs of mainstream use cases. And that's why we're really promoting the use of blockchain in the database to achieve most of these benefits uh, without the complexity. Okay, so the use cases are, um, uh, well, first of all, we, because Oracle makes it so easy to block, to, to block blockchain technology, we think it's usable in every industry in which are the applications, because you always have important data that you're trying to protect, right? So financial data, accounting, Assets, payments, insurance, you know, now you can protect those with an extra level of security. Logistic data, distribution, supply chain, shipments, recalls, you know, records of things that are moving around. You don't want those to be tampered with, right? Educations, degrees, certificates, professional history. You don't want someone to falsify your, your college degree, right? Um, government data, legal data, trial data, tax, permit, citizenship, title, and so forth. So it turns out there's lots and lots of data that should be protected but may not be protected as well as it could be. And likewise, corporate data, invoices, payments, contracts, and so on. So we think that there are many, many use cases for data that should be protected with a higher level of security that we're now offering. 
Um, here's some, some, some early customers of, others of our uh, blockchain technologies. So you can see that uh, Micro is a, is, a, is a legal field. They store reports and audit logs. Okay. And then this one is a contact tracing solution. Um, they store contact records, right? So, so then you know, this cannot be tampered with. You know, compliance records, tra tracking workflows to guarantee reliability, immutability, and issue certifications and so forth. And so I think these are all examples of real life use cases of this technology. Okay. So um, I want to sort of summarize what the use cases of blockchain and Oracle database are. Okay. So blockchain really adds to Oracle's unique maximum security architecture. So then the maximum security architecture includes database firewalls that provide deep monitoring of, of database messages has database vault that prevents administrators from accessing application data, has labor security in virtual private databases that enforce role level security. Right? And then we offer transparent data encryption that encrypts data on this, such that if your data were lost or whatever, no one can you know, read it essentially. Right? And we have data redaction that obscures sensitive data so the application cannot see. Right? So you can see that you know, blockchain really adds to this whole architecture, right? Then finally, we also have the data safe cloud service that does assessments, monitoring, and auditing as a service. Key vault and manages keys. And, and the Oracle and the blockchain tables is a part of the converged database, right? And so and that, that's, that, I think that's, that's something that we, that we think is really helpful to simplify development and management. So as I said before, blockchain table is just a feature of our database, right? Which also supports native JSON, which supports microservices, um, spatial data, machine learning, right? Event processing, CI/CD pipelines, graph analytics, REST APIs, okay? And text data, right? So all these things are supposed in a single database. So you don't need to deploy multiple databases if you need multiple data types. Um, to summarize them, the blockchain Oracle database address real world data protection challenges. So we prevent immutable tables, prevent illicit insider changes, right? Then we have blockchain tables that detect illicit hacker changes that go underneath the database. We allow you to distribute the digest such that if some authority were to make massive changes or cover-ups of your data, they can be detected, right? And lastly, we provide data signing to prevent impersonated data fraud, preventing someone from using Someone else's credentials to make changes on their behalf. And, and again, these are all free features of Oracle Converge database. And you can deploy them incrementally when you're using mutable tables or blockchain tables, you know, with minimal application changes. Okay. And, uh, and that's, that's the end of my talk. And uh, then here is the, uh, some, re some resources that you can find about the blogs. There's a hands on lab that shows how this is used. And then there is um, documentation. Um, let's see, with that, I guess I'd be happy to answer any questions.